Greetings to all of humanity. It's really a joy. It's my pleasure. It's always my honor to be out here well connected with nature and bring to you this message of emancipation whereby I'm pointing you to look inwardly to discover that your real identity is your divinity. And that is why I want to speak to you concerning Abdullah's greatest advice to all of humanity. And Abdullah, as we know, was an Ethiopian rabbi who was the mentor of Neville Goddard. And the lectures and teachings of Neville Goddard is all around the world. And many, many people all around the world has benefited from the teachings of Neville Goddard. And Neville Goddard learned the way of the Bible along with the Kabbalah from Abdullah. And there's a main, main point that Abdullah wanted all of humanity to receive so that they would be able to to act in their highest capacity and that is the message i want to share with you which is the greatest advice that anyone can give to humanity and that great greatest advice have to do with the concept you hold about yourself and saying to you change the concept of yourself if you want to see things change in your life for the better, it means you have to change the concept of yourself. Now, let us be real. We all know that the resources that is in Africa can feed the entire world. As a matter of fact, in one African country alone, the resources in one African country can feed all of Europe, take care of all of Europe. Yet, many of these people are living in Dodpo poverty. And it all has to do with their mentality. Also, let us be real again. Everywhere around the world that people live, that is referred to as third world country. Most of the time, the people who live there, they believe in secular Christianity. They believe in the Mary and Jesus story. Yet they are living in doubtful poverty. Now, when you think more deeply, you have to realize that it all has to do with the concept they hold about themselves. That's why I would have written in the book called Your Mood is Your Fortune. Because the way how you feel about yourself is the way you will see the world and the way you will see others. So the world's biggest problem is that people do not have the right concept of themselves. Now, if you have the concept of a savior, or a redeemer, or a healer outside of yourself, then it means that you're loving someone more than yourself. But when you realize that the self of man is God, then you will change the concept of yourself. And you start loving yourself. Because you would understand that the greatest energy that anyone can vibrate on is the energy of love. And everything is energy, vibration and frequency, and we are mass of energy. Therefore, as a mass of energy, you have to vibrate on the love frequency. So my brother and my sisters, the fact that you are living in poverty it all have to do with the concept you hold of yourself. Everything goes back to one's mentality. Now, let us look at secular Christianity for a moment. Do you realize most people who are trapped in secular Christianity, they have no concept of the law of mentalism. They have no concept of their own mentality. Do you realize millions, billions of people around the world do not know that imagination is what creates reality. Do you realize most of these places that I'm speaking about and the people who are living in die, die hard poverty. Do you realize that they have a high, 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 high academic education kind of mentality and they believe in education more than their imagination? My brother and my sister, can you imagine in this country that I'm residing here right now where I born and grew up do you realize the, there's a politician who told the people and a politician who the people look up to based on his status of a politician, okay, and where he, where, where, where he, he stands 
okay, in the country, okay? He told them of an education revolution and everybody jump and shot. Yet, in this nation, all of the businesses are run by foreigners. And all these people who are chasing after education, they're all only ending up with a job. They're not providing jobs for thousands and thousands of people. That's why I wish I knew this truth of having the right perception of myself when I was a little boy or a teen. I wish there was someone to teach me this. I'm saying to you that you're quite fortunate and blessed to be receiving this message and you're responsible to share this with the younger ones. That is why Abdullah was willing to share this message with Neville Garden so that many people would open their eyes and see that they can create their reality consciously and many would think more wisely and understand that there are only two kind of people in the world. The foolish and the wise. The head and the tail. The lenders and the borrowers. Those who are above and those who are beneath. And when you look at life itself, there is a head and there is a tail. You can be the thinker and the doer. You can be a leader or you can just be a follower. So my brother and my sisters, the greatest encouragement that anyone can give to you is that you must change the concept of yourself and the greatest encouragement i could give anyone is to change the concept of yourself if you do not like what is happening in your life change your mentality and you change your reality my brother my sisters hold yourself responsible for everything that is happening in your life and that is why abdullah taught Neville to hold himself responsible for his thought farms and show him that his mentality is what is shaping his reality. And Abdullah said to Neville, prove me wrong with what I am teaching you. I am saying to you, sleep as if you are sleeping in your mother's home in Barbados while you're residing in New York. And I'll prove to you that what you think is a depression and what you think is luck in your life, you would realize it is because of the concept that you're holding about yourself. And so, Neville began to sleep in his mother's home in Barbados in his imagination while he resided in New York. And also, while he walked the streets of New York, he was seeing himself walking the streets of Barbados in his mind's eye. And when it became a reality, and he went there physically, then he understand man is responsible for everything that is taking place in his life. So my brother and my sisters, your mentality is what is making you poor or making you rich. So, if you want change in your life, it's not going to come based on a religious system. It's not going to come if you change the church that you've been going to. It's not going to come because you leave the church now. But you still have all of those old concepts inside of you. That is going to come when you have a change of the concept you hold about yourself. If you still believe that you're wretched and you still believe that you're, that, that you're a sinner who needs a savior, you have to change that concept of yourself. Because... That kind of concept that was given to you by secular Christianity, it is one for you to hate yourself. It is one for you to condemn yourself. It is one for you to bring shame upon yourself and guilt upon yourself. But I'm saying to you, you are free and that there is a law of liberty. And all you have to do is change your mentality. That is why I always point you to look inwardly because the kingdom of God is within you. And remember, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So my brother and my sisters, when you understand, as I would have said before, the law of mentalism, start there first with the law of mentalism, knowing that there is none to change but yourself. So my brother and my sisters, these words that I'm bringing to you, these are words of wisdom to really help you and to strengthen you, as Abdullah would have strengthened Neville, so he would live a first class life here by first seeing 
and knowing how the mind works and that the Bible addresses the human mind and must be interpreted psychologically, that it is not literal, neither is it secular history. And he found out for himself that Jesus Christ in man is man's imagination and that the Bible is your spiritual autobiography. As I said before, that must be interpreted psychologically. So my brother, my sisters, if this message do not help you to free yourself, it is because you are condemning yourself. Remember the unpardonable sin is self-doubt. If you speak against yourself, you go against yourself, you hate yourself, you condemn yourself, there is no one who can save you. There's no one who can redeem you. Stop depending on someone outside of yourself and embrace self-government. Get in touch with the prophetic side of yourself because that's what Neville did when Abdullah taught him how to change the concept of himself and how he could prophesy his life how he wants it to be. You realize Habakkuk chapter 2 tells you that to make sure to write down your vision because you are a visionary. Write down your prophet. Because, write down your, 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 your vision because you are a prophet. You can prophesy your life how you want it to be. And you can prophesy in other people's life also because you can use your imagination on their behalf as Abdullah uses imagination on Neville's behalf and put him in a place of affluence where he had the money and he could have traveled first class to Barbados. So my brother and my sisters, this is the message that needs to be heard in all so-called third world country. That no one would be without excuse. But yet, let me say this, in all honesty, there will always be balance. There will always be the poor among you. The Bible says that. There will always be those who want to dwell in their stinking thinking. And always want to believe that they can attain something by some works of righteousness that they would have done. But my brother and my sisters, that is what makes life so interesting when you can understand the law of polarity, when you can understand that I am God and there is no other. I kill and I make a life. I wound and I heal. It is so good when you can understand that I am God and there is no other. I create the darkness and I create the light. I create good and I create evil. That is so powerful and that is such a great understanding. When you understand it and you master it, then you can live happily with everyone without any judgment or any condemnation towards anyone. And so, my brother and my sister, I can go on and on and on with this message because I feel so inspired. I feel so energized to reach out to you to change the concept that you hold of yourself. I've been in secular Christianity and I've come to discover the message of self-realization. And it all came by experience of my birth from the skull. And I'm saying to you, I know the difference. And I am not speaking of anything that I have never experienced. The most deceiving thing that can happen in your life is for you to speak about things that you never experienced for yourself. Or for to have, uh, to have the wrong concept of what you are experiencing based on what someone would have told you. Because many people say, how could you say Jesus as a literal man never exists? You can't tell me what I feel inside of me. You can't tell me what I experience inside of me. Yes, what you experience, everyone is experiencing it also. What you are seeking for in this life, everyone is seeking for that also. And we see the people who have made this world a better place. We see their contribution. We see all of the things that were invented that have helped humanity tremendously. And many religious people use these same things. And they testify of these things of a great blessing in their life. They get money and they give praises to God. But they fail to realize that the man or woman who had to come up with the idea of the money, they had to believe themselves in themselves and they had to change the concept of themselves. Those who invented the airplane, invented the telephone, the internet, all of these things, the electricity, all of these things, the men and the women, they had to change the concept of themselves and believe when no one else was believing with them. When they had this new idea that no one would have done or explored before. This creative imagination that was inspiring them. They had to believe in all of that by changing the concept of themselves. Orville and Wilbur Wright, the Wright brothers. It is said that they, when they had the idea 
of creating the aeroplane, it was said to them by a preacher that they're trying to be God and they were born in hell for wanting to fly. Now every preacher is flying on a private jet and claiming that it is God's blessing in their life. My brother and my sister, it's time for us to wake up and have the right concept of ourselves. Acknowledge our God self. Acknowledge our creative self. Acknowledge that everything is mental and everything is psychological. Acknowledge the fact that no book, including the Bible, could be written and it wasn't for us a thought or for us an idea or for us imagine. It's basic common sense. It is so simple. My brother, my sisters, I say to you, share this message with everyone you, you come into contact with and have them listen to this message from the beginning to the end. You realize the people will disagree with you when you say that imagination creates reality and God is in man and the kingdom of God is within you. When they disagree with you, knowing that you are saying to them that the Bible is false mental and Bible is false psychological and must be interpreted psychologically, they disagree with you, they're proving you right. It has to first be psychological. Everything you do and say, it has to first be psychological. It has to first be mental. Oh my! How could people be so dumb? How people could be so blind? Why? Because they make sure they get this kind of concept that many people are holding. They make sure they got, got it downloaded in their subconscious mind at a very young age. That is such a shame. And those who have put such a system in place to keep people so brainwashed. Do you realize the educational system that has been given to us? Especially in the Caribbean and in the so-called third world countries, what they call third world. Okay, the religious system and the, the educational system and the political system, they all work together to keep the people in that kind of mentality. And I'm not leaving out the other countries, okay, that they're not referring to as third world countries. I'm talking about those countries too, but they do it in different ways. For example, you're living in the Caribbean, you're living in Africa, they make the people live in a realm of scarcity. Okay, as if they hardly could eat food, um, enough food and so on and hardly could get enough money. And then in the, in the bigger metropolitan countries, they, 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 they give them so much cheap junk food, food that is not good for the system and make them become obese and make them become unhealthy. So from one extreme to the other extreme, that is why we have to have balance in our life and understand how everything is working by understanding our mind. And having the right concept of ourselves. So my brother my sister, as I come to a close. I just want to encourage you to get my book. Which is called. Your mood is your fortune. And get into the right mood. The right concept of yourself. And live a life of joy, peace and happiness. Right now I'm living in heavenly places. Within my Christ self. And I'm pouring out my Christ self to you. So you would recover or discover your Christ self within you and use that power to achieve your every desire for that is what was taught to Neville Gala by our ancestor Abdullah so with that being said my brother and my sisters I want to thank you very much I want to say to you if this is the very first time that you're listening to me and what I'm saying is really resonating with you and you haven't subscribed already I'm encouraging you to subscribe to like to comment or to share this video also, if you haven't started following me on Instagram, I'm encouraging you to follow me on Instagram at Black Mad Guru. And also, if you'd like to support this work, there's a link right down below. You can become a, a patron. Also, if you want coaching or mentoring, you can have that also. And if you would like to just support the work, you can support you PayPal also. So, I want to thank you very much. I want to say peace, joy, and happiness is yours. Claim it and live the best version of your life life. Just have the right concept of who you are. Peace. I'm out.